Hi, I'm Scott Ellen Miller. This is Sam IT here on YouTube, and today we're going to be talking about how job hunting in IT is surprisingly like dating online. Now, I mentioned this in an earlier video, but I want to dive into this some, mostly because I want you to understand how this affects you as the person who's looking for a job. Now, when we talk about how it's like dating online, it's a little bit funny, but it is actually really close. We've already talked about how most of the jobs are fake. We've already talked about how the kind of the interaction happens, but it is important to understand a couple more things, and most importantly, what it means for you as the person looking for a job. Or you could be an employer, and maybe you need to know too, because every because just like employees want to get good jobs. Employers want to get good employees. Both sides are losing out in the system currently. Understanding how this works is important because on online dating sites, for example, you have a problem where one side, generally the women, have uh, the ability to post profiles and then sit back and wait for men to try to contact them. That is kind of the majority case. That's how things are expected to work and how they work in the real world. A woman who posts a profile on a dating site expects to get inundated by men who are looking to contact her. Conversely, men pretty much expect there will be no contact in the other direction. There doesn't need to be. Women are generally flooded with uh, men who are looking for them, and men are willing to go out there and try to make contact and, and establish a conversation. Because of that existing dynamic, even women who would be willing to go out and contact a man don't need to because they are flooded with men who are contacting them. Their time just can't be wasted searching for someone. They have to deal with the contacts that already exist. Companies and employees are the same way. Companies put up a job posting and they are flooded with people who are looking for those positions. That means that they never go out looking for the right candidates. They don't have time. They have to spend their time looking through the resumes that they already have. Then that dynamic is fine, you just have to understand it. Uh, but companies that want to, obviously, as we talked about, collect resumes and don't intend to hire can do so very easily. It's all automated for them. Create a job posting and a million people will send you resumes. They may not be good candidates for the job you pretended to make, but that doesn't really matter if you're just collecting information. Now, Taking the same example, uh, when you're making contact on online dating, one of the logical things is uh, it seems logical that you want to make a really good first impression, right? There, uh, just like if you're at a bar and you wanted to walk up to a woman, you would do so. And sorry for women who have to do this from the IT pro side. This is probably very foreign for a lot of you. It is what it is. This is just how the world works, right? Um, if you're going up to a woman at a bar, you need to be persuasive in that first moment, right? You have to break the ice and be interesting right away. Online, that's not the case because the majority of profiles for women are fake. Not 10%, but 99%. Uh, because of that, uh, if you've ever done research in this space, it's really interesting that the best results would come from blasting out generic introductions because the chances that you're going to hit anyone who's real is very, very low. And so you need to maximize that opportunity by sending out the maximum number of hits. You cannot optimize for individual interactions because the average interaction is so unlikely to be real that you would never likely hit an actual interaction if you optimized per interaction. It's a weird algorithmic situation, but it's one you kind of have to think about mathematically to understand why certain things work and certain things do not work. Now you need to understand this on both sides because as an IT pro blasting out resumes, you don't want to spend a lot of time getting to know any particular job because it's worthless. The average job that you look at is fake and doesn't exist. So if you spend a bunch of time researching companies, researching jobs, looking into locations, you're going to waste your time on something that will never come to fruition. It's fake, probably. And so you get your maximum benefit of sending out a lot of generic resumes uh, to a lot of companies and seeing who responds and at least has some hope of being real. As a company, you need to look at things the opposite way and say, well, we don't want to look for people who are putting in a lot of time to optimize per job. We want to look for people who are blasting out. And that may sound counterintuitive, but it shouldn't be. If the companies understood the math, they would know that a, generally a candidate who's putting in a lot of time making cover letters, researching their company, knowing all about them, looking people up, if they do that, these are people who aren't valuing their time because they're doing all that when they don't know if this job is real or not. And that means they're kind of desperate, right? But a lot of companies 
have a tendency to want people who are real, and you'll hear this from companies, we want someone who's passionate about working for us. Why would I know your company? You're just a random employer. I have no way to know you're any good until I've gone to at least interview and really until I've been working there for a while. If I'm passionate about you before I've done those things, the only thing that that suggests is that I'm desperate for any work anywhere and I'm only passionate because you might pay me. That's not who you want to hire. Doesn't mean you want to rule out hiring me necessarily, but hiring based solely on desperation is a really bad approach. And yet, lots of bad employers actually optimize around desperation because they have an emotional desire for people to have known them ahead of time and be passionate about working for them, even though it's completely nonsensical. Um, so as a good employer, you want to be very aware that the people who are applying to you have no idea who you are, have no idea if they want to work for you, and most importantly, have to assume that your job listing is fake, whether your company is fake, or just the listing is fake, or that it's kind of fake-ish. Those things are the likely possibilities. They have to assume that. If you assume that they know magic things about you that they can't know, you will be the loser. They will also suffer, but you will suffer more because you will only get the candidates that don't get it or are really desperate and have lots and lots of free time to try to maximize their interaction with every single possible job that which simply doesn't make logical sense given the kinds of numbers that are out there. So on both sides, it's important to understand this interaction. To maximize this, the best case scenario is that if you're an IT pro looking for work outside of really special cases, right, when you're online looking for work, I guess is the important thing here. If you're, if you're talking to your buddy and you have a favor to call in at a company you know and you know lots of people inside, great, put a lot of effort focused on that company, that's not fake. You know it's not fake, they know you know it's not fake, you can do that. But when you're dealing with the unknown, when you're online and you're looking for jobs, you need to maximize for bulk blasts. And that's just the way it works. If you're going to have a cover letter, it needs to be generic. But generally, you don't want a cover letter. That's an archaic thing from another era. And generally, you don't want any amount of customization in your resume. It should be well done, but generic that you can blast out to everyone or nearly everyone. Having one resume for systems and one for networking, that would be acceptable. Identify what kind of job it is and just quickly do it. That's okay. But you don't customize for the individual job online blast. You just don't. You need to be able to do bulk uh, submissions very, very quickly. And as a hiring company, you need to promote hiring the people who did that, right? You don't want the people who are spending lots and lots of time customizing for you because it means they didn't take the time to actually think about how the system works or they're very naive or they're just really desperate and willing to do anything to come work for anyone. Um, and especially once they start brown nosing and writing, you know, detailed cover letters about how great it would be to work for you when they don't even know if you're real, think about what that means. The same thing goes if you happen to be someone who's on online dating and you're reading the same thing, the same thing applies. If someone puts in a whole bunch of time to, to read a, a most likely fake profile and then talk about how great it would be to meet you, they don't even know who you are. They don't even know if you're a real person. They don't even know if you're, you're even a bot, let alone a real person. How could they actually want to meet you that much? That doesn't make sense. It's not you that they're optimizing for. They're optimizing for desperation. So it's a weird comparison to make, but I think it's an important one. And people need to step back and think about how these interactions happen and what it means when you optimize for different things, what it implies about the different parties. So there's ways, while the situation is bad, there are ways today that we can improve it on both sides to optimize for actually finding good employers and ways to optimize for actually finding the more potentially good employees. Thanks for joining me here on Sam IT. I hope that this is helpful. This is a tough one. I know this is hopefully going to have a lot of great discussion. Uh, and remember to like and subscribe and sponsor.